Hi, and welcome to Ford, Mississippi, Mississippi State University's television show exclusively for the College of Education. I'm Camille Karskadden, the communications communication specialist for the college. And today we have Dr. Greg Tweetmeyer from the Department of Kinesiology and Miss Julie Jones from the Startville Octobaha County School District. Thank y'all for coming. Thanks for Thank having you. us. So both of y'all are involved with um, Mississippi State's I Can Bike Camp, correct? Correct. Wonderful. And um, can you all tell me a little bit about the camp? It's a special needs bike camp that teaches uh, children and adults how to ride a two-wheel bike independently. So some research on the University of Michigan suggests that that population of students, 80% uh, of them will never learn how to ride a bike. And if you remember back when you were five or six and you learned how to ride, it's kind of your first step into adulthood. So it's a pretty big uh, achievement and it's a pretty big deficit if you don't achieve it for whatever reason. So the bike camp turns that number upside down and we take um, a population where 80% would never learn how to ride. By the end of the week, 80% of the campers are riding on, on a bike by their own. It's wonderful. So I know a few people that actually can't ride a bike. So why is that important for an important part of childhood? Well, I mean, I, there's the reason I already mentioned about independence, right? It's kind of, you can sort of see it in the foggy mist, your driver's license when you ride a bike for the first time, because you can actually go away on your own. You can ride out and get a Slurpee at 7-Eleven. You can ride with your friends to the woods and dink around and so forth. Uh, so there's the independence factor, but I think also just the joy of riding, right? We take that for granted. We have the phrase in our culture, it's easy as riding a bike. Not everybody can learn how to ride. They don't have that joy of the wind in their hair and, and riding down a hill and learning to ride without your hands. Not that we teach that in the camp and so forth, but uh, I think we discount the play factor and the fun factor too much, but there's also health benefits. There's peer inclusion, socialization, and so forth, self-confidence. There's a lot of benefits. Great, and who is this camp for? Uh, well, typically it's Down syndrome and autism, but it would be anybody who had an intellectual or physical disability that inhibited them to ride, learn how to ride in the traditional manner. Uh, the camp uh, has a few requirements. You have to be willing to wear a bike helmet. You gotta be able to walk without an assistive device. Uh, you gotta be at least eight years old. Uh, the interventions they've tried with kids younger don't work very well and they don't wanna have somebody fail and then have to come back a second time with all those doubts in the back of their mind. Um, so generally, like I said, it's uh, Down syndrome and autism, but any disability, intellectual or physical, that inhibits uh, learning to ride is who we target. And how did you become involved with this camp? Uh, I was watching a football game, actually, on my couch in West Virginia when I used to work at Marshall University in uh, the fall of 2000, must have been fall 2010. And, uh, it was on the Big Ten Network, and they sort of have their little puff pieces, propaganda pieces at, at halftime saying, you know, how great Indiana is or how great Michigan is or what have you. And they had one at Michigan, which actually is my alma mater for my master's degree. But anyway, they, they sold it like this camp was something that Michigan had created. They had created the bikes. They had done all this research. And I, I, I was dumbfounded. Oh, this is so cool. And I just wanted to use it in class as an example of, of holistic philosophy, engaging the whole person. So when I got back to... Uh, campus on Monday, I did a quick search, you know, Google and so forth, and quickly realized it wasn't something that Michigan had done, it was just something they had hosted with a charity uh, called I Can Shine. So I said, well, if Michigan can host it, why can't we? And it kind of snowballed from there. So we hosted it five times at Marshall, uh, then I came here, we did it in 2016, uh, and then we're doing it again here this year. The last two years, I think you want to talk about that in a future question, but we've been trying to expand the size and scope of the camp across the state. Wonderful. And <coughs> Julie, you are the Director for Student Support Services? Yes. So how did you become involved with this camp? Um, actually, Dr. Tweetmeyer uh, reached out to us and said, hey, I've got this great program that I think your students um, would benefit from. And so he came to talk with us, myself and a couple of my bosses. And, um, and just explain the program. And when I saw the benefits, the independence, the confidence it could give our kids, um, the possibility of some of our older students being able to bike themselves to and from a job, or even just um, you know, for health benefits for the kids, I thought it would be a great opportunity for our students. And has the school district been involved since 2016, or is this a more recent? He, um, 
he reached out to us, I believe it was last year, and we've been trying for the past two years to really kind of get together the logistics of it, and, um, and it's, it's finally coming to fruition this year, um, most of it due to, to his hard work, but um, we, we really appreciate the chance to be involved. And I know we just touched on this, but what are your long? What is your long-term vision for the I Can Buy Camp? Well, the, like I said, the charity that uh, runs the camps across the country uh, generally does them over the summer for scheduling purposes, availability of gym space, and so forth. And uh, the bikes—they have six or seven fleets, I think. All but one or two of them are dormant for the rest of the year. And when I moved here. Being the good Midwesterner that I am, I said, oh, there's no winter. Uh, it really barely ever gets cold. Certainly, we, you want to fight about January and February, fine. But the rest of the year, that rest of the academic year, perfectly uh, good weather to learn how to ride. Why not have one of those fleets on campus permanently as a separate location for one of their fleets and then go around the state, different college campuses, different uh, school district campuses, and so forth, and offer these camps throughout the academic year. Uh, and one of the big advantages of that is if we could get it uh, organized, funded, and pulled off, so to speak, is that the cost of each camp would go down significantly because the fleet would be local, the trained staff would be local. Right now we've got two graduate students who are officially trained as uh, employees for Ike and Shine and so forth. Great. How many campers can y'all take per, per year? Uh, well, there's five sessions a day of 75 minutes. That's one of the cool things about the program is if you do the math, it's a little over six hours and these kids learn how to ride. It's amazing how fast they pick it up with some help. Um, and five, seven, five sessions, 75 minutes ends up being about eight to five. So uh, depending on the size of the gym, the Sanderson Auxiliary, they were gracious enough to give us that for free, can handle seven riders at a time based on the space. So seven times five is 35. Wonderful. And can you walk us through a week of the camp? Yeah, so they start on adapted bikes. I don't know if we've got the video to show. It might help if I could coordinate. So you see on the back there, the wheel's been removed and there's some rollers. And if you see, there's a slight taper in the middle. So he's still mastering his balance point. But the fear factor really disappears, which is a big inhibition for this population. Then after six stages of rollers, they go to a tandem bike where they're riding a regular bike, but they have the experience and the thrust of the rider in the back to help them steer and power the bike. And then from that, um, they graduate outside to what is essentially a regular bike. The only difference is on the back, you'll see here in a moment uh, when we fade away again, uh, that there's a pole that extends up for the spotters to grab it if they get sort of that tractor beam look when you're first learning to ride and instead of braking or turning, you just get sucked into the wall or the curb or whatever you don't want to hit. And also they can help start. That's probably the, the skill that the kids Master last is the ability to start on your, their own, but you see here this rider, he's got his kickstart going, gets a little momentum, puts his feet up, and off he goes. So that's actually my nephew. His, uh, my sister-in-law uh, was very skeptical because he's got spinal muscular atrophy, which causes a stiffness and a weakness in the legs. She's, uh, you know, six hours away, it's not gonna work, it's gonna hurt his self-esteem and so forth. He was the first kid outside. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so it's not just the campers, it's also you and volunteers. So who are these volunteers? Uh, usually students. Sometimes I give them incentives of extra credit. Sometimes I build it into the course and force them to volunteer. Uh, sometimes we recruit them for other classes uh, or other majors. So a lot of them are kinesiology students. Sometimes they're elementary ed or special ed. Uh, Pre-med people have been involved. Some it's just a random student that says, you know, this is cool, or had a niece, or a nephew, or a little brother, or an older brother that had some sort of special need, and so forth. Sometimes it's faculty members. Uh, generally, it skews young because when you get outside, that you saw the clip there when he's just getting started, he's not going that fast. But they pick up speed pretty quick, and you're you're chugging along next to him. You got to be in shape. And um, how does one become a volunteer for this program? Uh, we have a volunteer re a registration form on our website, bulldogbike.msstate.edu, and you just click on the volunteer tab, download the PDF, fill it out, uh, drop it off if you're on campus, stick it in the mail if you want to go really slow, email it to me, take a picture of it, scan it, whatever, and email it to me and I will add you to the registration of the volunteers. 
Fantastic. And so like many of the camps, it, this one probably relies on some donations. So what are the camp's needs for this year and every year? Uh, well, it costs about $6,000 to $8,000, depending on whether it's a localized fleet, like I talked about briefly before, to get the bikes here, the modified bikes and the bikes with the uh, poles on them and everything. And uh, then it's about $1,000 for t-shirts and other incidentals and so forth. You end up, depending on uh, the details, between eight and $10,000 for each camp. Uh, we try to keep the costs low through our agreement with the Starkville schools. Everybody that registers through the school district gets in for free. Um, so we try to fundraise all of that money, but you know, as the phrase goes, money doesn't grow on trees. So uh, any sponsors that can uh, jump in and help is always beneficial. The Mississippi Council on Developmental Disabilities has always been good about helping us. Uh, Department of Rehabilitation Services, other local communities. Uh, my extended family actually always gives $500 because my father, my late father, uh, was a PE guy and was always real excited about the camp. So we do it in memory of him and my mother. Um, anybody that's excited about the idea, really. Um, and like I said, we need this year about $8,000 to break even. And mm. going back to the school districts, are you hoping um, to get more school districts involved? We're discussing it with Columbus uh, as well. I haven't confirmed that they're gonna sign on the dotted line, so to speak, but we really wanna make sure that all 35 slots are as close to it as we can are full. I, I mentioned the 8,000, we pay the same amount of money whether we help 20 kids or we help 35. You might as well help 35. Wonderful. And with the Startful St School District, I know you said y'all were involved, but what is the extent of y'all's involvement? Um, right now, we are trying just to recruit students and let the families know what's going on, the benefits of it, and recruit students who uh, qualify and are interested. And like Dr. Tweetmeyer said, um, if we can't fundraise all of the, the costs, then the school is going to cover the cost of the camp. So the kids, um, they can go and there won't be any kind of financial thing keeping them back from going. And so we're really encouraging um, any parent who thinks that they're their child uh, who may have a, a physical or a mental disability and might be able to benefit from this, that they go ahead and contact our office or Dr. Tweetmeyer's office and, and get them signed up. Wonderful. And finally, what are the dates of this year's camp? Yeah, it's May 6th through 10th. Uh, and like I said, the first session starts at 8.30, last session starts at 3.30. If you're a volunteer, you don't need to be there all day. You're just there for one session that you sign up for. Like I said, Wednesday through Friday, you'll be plenty tired after one session. You won't want to be there all day. Uh, and it's at the Sanderson Center in the auxiliary gym. And then on Wednesday, when the students and riders start to graduate, we'll be out in a quartered off parking lot next to the new Veterans Administration building. For more information about the College of Education, you can visit educ.msstate.edu.